Blessings, everyone. Here is a question that I normally get about the didgeridoo. And it goes, is it hard to learn how to play it? How about circular breathing? Is it difficult to get it? I would hope the question would be, how easy it is to play the didgeridoo? And the answer that I will give would be yes. It's easy. You see, there's nothing physical about it. And what I mean by that, you don't need a whole lot of strength and breath to get the drone going. And to also, later on, develop the skill to do the circular breathing. It's pretty easy. Now, why do I say that? Because I want you to understand what is the didgeridoo from my point of view. See? It's a musical instrument. It's a healing instrument from Australia. It is the gatekeeper of this instrument or the original Aboriginal people of Australia. And it is made out of usually tree trunks, bore out by termites, or nowadays people make them synthetically either with chemicals or some people will cut a regular tree and they will split it and bore it out, make a hole, you know, with, with their tool like a carpenter and they put it back together and some people use other stuff. Beside the point, what I'm saying is this, it is you the person that create the sound through the didgeridoo. So, it is easy? Yes, it is. Because it is your, your energy, your intention, your vibration. Another question, how long did it take you, Evan, to learn the didgeridoo and how did you learn it? I say, well, I didn't learn it, I just remember how to play it but it took me about three months to get the drone that woo sound. Three months. And it's true, three months. Why? Because I have a lot of stuff to get rid of. A lot of doubts. Even though I make up my mind that I will play the didgeridoo, but I didn't believe that I could get it right away. And when I tried for the first time, I was working with it for about an hour until I got frustrated. But something clicked inside and said, hmm, continue play this thing. It's your medicine. And I decided I'm gonna play this didgeridoo until I'm gonna work with it until I get that sound, that boo sound we call the drone. What am I saying to you? That is, if you have the intention to play the didgeridoo, keep one thing in mind. It's about you inside that want to play the didgeridoo. Whatever you think who you are, whatever you think what this inside is, but the decision to want to play it come from inside. It's a feeling. See? But the body, the mind, and the spirit have to be one. And that's why you have to practice. So, <clears throat> If you have a didgeridoo and you have the intention to play, 
I would say pick it up and begin to practice with it. Now here are some tips of how to get the drone. First of all, imagine that at the tip of the digital like this one that I have here, at the tip, at the very top of the hole, imagine that there's a little bubble, like a ball, like a ball and it's spinning but it's not falling down into the digital, it's actually spinning like this inside the very top. And I want you to use the imagination and when you put your lips, this is just one way, there's many ways to get it, but I'm just sharing this little thing. Imagine that your tip of your tongue is pressing against the upper lip right here. It's like a starting point. That's how I got it. And imagine I, you press your tip of your tongue on the upper lip like this. So you kind of get like a drum sound on the right here underneath the lip. And the idea is like igniting a match to create a fire. You got You get, you know, the match with the matches box, and you go If you do too hard, you might break the stick, or it might just erase the sulfur and no spark. And if you do too light, there's nothing happening. So you got to get that, that little bit of pressure. Once you ignite, you just release the pressure. It's like starting that little ball going. So here's what I mean, if you can see it. Now, if you do too soft, this is what you might get. Or if you do too hard, you might get. So it's very subtle. Imagine that little ball like a bubble is halfway in your mouth, halfway in the ditch, so it's like spinning like this. That's the life force. And you use your spirit mind from the heart, with the heart, to keep it going. And you relax. And you can continue to breathe and just breathe, here's a long breathing where no breath, relax your stomach, don't try to bring in a whole bunch of air, relax. You already have air in your stomach, so you don't need to add any more. Just relax. Not circular breathing, just being relaxed with it. And allow the ball to just keep going. It's like you don't want to break it. It's very delicate, but very powerful. And you could feel it. Some people perceive it as a back pressure coming through the dish, coming back at you. But I imagine it as something circulating. Now, with that same imagination, you can imagine that same ball is now coming down in here and circulating. And if you practice the long drone, imagine.
imagine that little breath that you take in is like you're chewing it, like, mm, mm. And you get that circular, and then you could just feel this whole thing circling through you within your, your skull, in your cathedral, in your head, as some people can perceive it as the microscopic orbit going down and coming up, but maybe that's too much right now. I just want you to be relaxed with it and work with it in the baby sense. Now, let me tell you a story about circular breathing. Don't wait until you know how to do circular breathing, okay? Because you could play with all the musicians without circular breathing. In fact, especially if you play with drummers, they give you time enough to breathe and you keep playing and nobody around you would even know whether you're doing circular breathing or not because the drum is making space for you or you can play in between the space if you listen very carefully you know and in fact um, I would I used to think that man playing with drummer that no one will be able to hear the didgeridoo because it's such a low drum. But you see, use that opportunity to practice. And I tell you a story. Years ago in New York City, someone invited me to a drum circle. All right? And it was in a building, winter time, and there was a whole bunch of brothers and sisters Lining up, I would say about six or seven drummers. Some are playing bass, some are playing trouble. And this amazing brother who played the shakere, he was there with his shakere and they were jamming and there was a whole bunch of sisters dancing. And when I walk in with the didgeridoo, one of the drummers looked at me and said, What is that? I said, The didgeridoo. I said, What are you going to do with this? Because he know no one's going to be able to hear me. But you know what I did? I went behind the drummers, and as they were playing for the dancers, I had the didgeridoo pointing to the floor. And I was creating that vibration in the floor. Now, they can't hear me, but they felt something underneath their feet. And after they finished, one of the brothers said, man, what was that? <laughs> And he realized, wow, you were doing that with that thing? He said, oh man, thank you so much. I was feeling that vibration. And he was just holding the bass, you know. It was like, and they invite me to come back again. Because they said, wow. And, you know, and that was a lesson for me. Like, I can practice. I could practice rhythm with drummers. Just by sharing. I wasn't concerned about what I sound like, if I'm going to lose the drone and all this kind of stuff. No. My intention was just to share because I admire them playing and the way they were playing. They were skillful brothers and sisters. But I figured I can contribute if I keep the, the didgeridoo low on that wooden floor. And believe me, it was vibrating the floor. So, think about it. Why do you want to play the didgeridoo? Sometimes the why doesn't matter. It's the feeling. You get an opportunity to learn something new. You get an opportunity to, to explore inside because it's more about your psychic ability. It's more about how you can imagine it's going to work on your emotions and whatever it is. And it also could strengthen your body. If you practice and remember how to use it. And you will know. You notice I'm not saying learning how to play. I'm saying that everything that you are exploring in your life is a remembering. You see? And therefore, you have to do it. So, I'm making myself available to you. If you need that inspiration 
and that help to get it, reach out to me, evanwhirlwind at gmail.com or on Facebook, Evan Whirlwind or artistdreamfamily.com. I play a little bit for you and I believe with the right mind that you can get it. Just you might need a little bit more inspirational um, words and somebody on your side, you know? And remember, you are an artist at birth because we are artists and we are a family. All right? So I'll play a little bit for you and um, thank you for sharing this time with me and looking forward to hear from you. Let me know what do you think about this video. Share it. Give me your ideas. If you already know how to play the didgeridoo, maybe share some of your ideas that could help other people. All right? So, much love and respect. Peace.